Hello, I'm Alfred Brooks. Every spring, all across the country, bizarre motorized contraptions can be seen traveling along America's highways, piloted by their creators on a path toward Texas to participate in what claims to be the largest event of its kind, the annual Houston Art Car Parade. So what might compel a person to go to so much trouble to create this sort of silliness? Could it be the handiwork of some insidious virus? Neurochemical imbalances or undiagnosed thyroid problems? Is it possible these afflicted folks were inadvertently exposed to some environmental contaminant? Had a bad reaction to their medication? Or was it simply something they ate? Most importantly, is there any chance this silliness might somehow be contagious? We don't know. So, let's ask around, shall we? Research is still in its early stages, but already we've seen the brains of art car enthusiasts behaving in ways we've never witnessed before. When you see the image, tell me the very first word that pops into your mind. Hood ornament, quarter panel, electric antenna. That's gross. That's just gross. <laughs> For many of us, the habit started out innocently enough, just a pair of fuzzy dice dangled from a rear view mirror. Fuzzy dice are a gateway ornamentation. She was such a sweet child, kind of quiet and shy, good in school, never a lick of trouble out of her. And then one day we hear this hawking in the driveway and Ora Mae peeks through the curtains. There's this boy out there in his convertible. Biggest pair of fuzzy dice you ever saw dangling from the rear view mirror. After we retired, we were looking for some sort of hobby we could do together. We tried firecracker hat dancing at first, and that was fun for a while. But once they let us go home from the burn ward, <laughs> some folks like to go see art. Others prefer their art to come see them. Be a little like hoarding, but for people on the go. I don't know about you, but I hear the term art car, and I'm picturing Bugattis or a nice 1938 Delahaye convertible. So yes, the parade's been a little disappointing so far. In the little town where I grew up, the closest you ever saw to something you could call an art car was the bookmobile that came through once a month. It mostly just carried farmers' almanacs and seed catalogs. But the seed catalogs had some pretty nice pictures in them sometimes. Robber chickens, headless barbies, get your beads and trinkets.
There's too much to see. I have no idea where I'm supposed to look. With art, one's eye needs to be gently guided along a seductive journey. This feels more like being tossed down onto some paleolithic rock and having your bearskin bloomers yanked down around your ankles. As creative urges go, we can do so much better. We're not like those folks who diddle around on a computer all the time and try to pass that stuff off as art. You mean like filmmakers or photographers, for example? Well, they say the truth hurts. That's usually how you know it's true. Say what you will about their choice of media, but the level of detail in some of these pieces makes Bosch's garden look like Rothko's chapel. Well, I think it's all very interesting, but real art doesn't have exhaust pipes. People look at the art car community and think we've lost our minds, and, well, yes, some of us have sniffed a bit more than our fair share of glue over the years, but... Psst. Hey, buddy. Wanna buy some Colombian rubber cement? You're that filmmaker guy, aren't you? Pleasure to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but my fingers are stuck to my trousers. Modern adhesives are a technological wonder, but you have to be careful with them. Before we developed our art car habit, we didn't look a thing like Siamese twins. Glue guns, glue sticks, get them while they're hot. It was all my fault. I had him in one of those 12-step programs for recovering art car junkies, and he was doing fine, had just received his six-month coin, hadn't come home smelling like a glue factory in forever. And then one day I was emptying the dishwasher and snapped the handle off his favorite Burning Man coffee mug. I was already running late for my pedicure appointment, so I left the pieces out on the kitchen counter and before you could say Bob Smith Industries clear slow cure epoxy. Well, so much for that. We tried one of those 12-step programs, but admitting that our lives have become unmanageable doesn't really make getting through turnstiles any easier. You can't help but look back and wonder, if only you'd done this or done that. I should have marched out there with the pruning shears. That's what I should have done. Two quick snips with the pruning shears, that would have done the trick. We tried some other, more conventional hobbies. Skydiving and spelunking. Whitewater rafting and bungee cord jumping. <laughs> but as entertaining ways to spend our golden years, it always felt like a little something was missing. Then Betty came home from the dollar store one day with a pair of fuzzy dice and... It's a good place to come if you like to count things. I like to count things. I come here a lot. It's a good place. Most people think the art car movement is a modern phenomena, but truth is its historical origins date all the way back to the Great Depression. People would attach all kinds of things to their automobiles back in those days. Everything they owned, really. Wash tubs, bedside tables. Live chickens and goats. Parade routes sometimes stretched all the way from Oklahoma and Kansas to the San Joaquin Valley. Of course, people mostly attached stuff onto their cars with string back in those days. String and twine. If you wanted to glue something down, you had to wait till somebody's horse died. <gasps> they had wheat paste for a while until the locusts showed up. But even when it was available, wheat paste could be a tricky medium to work with. Everybody saved string and twine, never knew when they might throw a parade. Daddy, yeah! Daddy, yeah!
I'm with a manufacturing facility in Detroit, head of production design. Nobody wants to buy our cars anymore, but everybody seems to love these. I don't see how they're all that different. And then the fuel injector system started belching out fire, and the folks along the parade route thought that was what it was designed to do, but... So I'm driving down the interstate, staring at this crazy contraption, and I never even saw the poor fellow on the motorcycle step on his brakes, so yes, I'm suing. These people might call it art, but I call it a menace to navigation. Well... You're going to think this is funny, but I didn't realize the hardware store had given me the wrong kind of adhesive, and so I'm driving down the interstate when it starts to rain, and driving down the road and having pieces fall off of your car, that was originally one of our design innovations. We thought of it first. Flames are leaping, people are laughing and applauding, and all I've got to try and douse it with is my spit cup full of tobacco juice. Looking back on it now, it's easy to laugh, but at the time... <sighs> and now, a message from the National Safety Council. Here at the National Safety Council, our studies show that until the next global pandemic comes along... Bring out your days when... Or a large meteor... Or a large meteor... There's not really much that can be done about traffic congestion. So until the day comes when our National Safety Council scientists can find a way to create a good pandemic. Or a large meteoric accident. Or a large meteoric accident. National Safety Council, we figure, why not make that traffic congestion a bit more entertaining? Remember what they used to say about rape? It's like the weather. If it's inevitable, relax and enjoy it. So, here at the National Safety Council, we're in the process of designing new and exciting automotive industry standards that would require all cars sold in America to have as many silly knickknacks glued to their exterior surfaces as is physically possible. Polling data suggests that not only will these new regulations make traffic congestion more enjoyable. If everyone drove art cars, getting stuck in traffic would be a lot more fun. How are you going to get mad at someone who cuts you off if it gets you a closer look at their crazy automobile? But they will also take enormous pressure off the landfills as well. This has been a message from the National Safety Council, where your automotive safety and comfort mean more to us than the world. Good evening. I'm Alfred Brooks. The National Safety Council has asked me to make a series of little films for them to illustrate the way that the large-scale manufacturer of art cars might alleviate, perhaps even eliminate, certain traffic issues. And in this film, they would like me to talk about road rage. Now, when I signed on to make this series of films, I was given the impression that I would have the benefit of a large-scale budget. But, as it turns out, the National Safety Council got a little cheap with their funding. And the social media team was under the impression they were hiring Albert Brooks. Our bad. Fire! As a result, I've had to rely more than I would care to on what might euphemistically be called stock footage. Or, to be more precise, low-res stuff I could download for free off of YouTube, hopefully without getting caught. Sorry, but it's the best I can do. But enough about my problems. Join me for a moment and 
Let's go see how art cars might help us solve the modern safety hazard of road rage. Let's start with a well-known example. Remember what happened to Dennis Hopper in the classic road film Easy Rider? After Dennis flipped off that pair of hillbillies. Now, let's try to reimagine that scene and see what might happen if Dennis were driving an art car. Why don't you get a haircut? That was better, right? Want to see another example? Here's some YouTube clips I spliced together showing some people who drive ugly cars behaving badly. <laughs> Now, let's compare that sequence to these art car scenes from one of the Mad Max films. You'll notice that while everyone in these scenes is still behaving badly, they seem to be having a wonderful time doing so. And isn't that the most important thing? Psst, hey, buddy, they don't drive art cars in Mad Max. They drive mutant vehicles. It's a completely different mode of transportation. I'm sorry, I thought. Never mind. Listen, I know where I can get you some tie glue sticks cheap. <laughs> Okay, so maybe Mad Max isn't such a great example, but that's the kind of results you have to expect when you cut a director's budget. I'm Alfred Brooks. Thank you for watching. So, Doctor, is there any chance this art cartism might be contagious? Oh, I think the general public can rest assured it has no cause for concern. Hood ornament, quarter panel, electric antenna, Though, just to be safe, you might want to avoid any sort of intimate contact with fuzzy dice. Coming up after this important commercial break, could fluoridated water be turning your neighbors into deranged menaces to navigation? The unbelievable story you're going to believe. <laughs> like to travel. And we like to abuse inhalants. So, there you have it. We're old enough now we don't really have to worry about long-term brain damage. As long as we have enough neurons left to be able to find our car keys, we figure we'll be okay. Honey, have you seen the car keys? I thought you had them. Did you look in the toaster? We wake up in the middle of the night, every night, wondering and worrying. We'd do anything to get her back. Anything. <laughs>